Hey Netta. Hey Lana. <laughs> okay, so we're just gonna start off with uh, telling me a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is Netta. I was born and raised in Iran, Tehran, the capital. I moved to Canada when I was 20. I spent about a good 15 years in Toronto before I started traveling. And then somehow I found myself heading to Peru. And I've been living here in Peru for the past two and a half years. Okay. Can I ask you, what made you decide to live here? Well, at first I didn't know that I'm going to live here. At first I only came here for medicine. Well, yeah, the beauty, the nature, and the medicine. And then after that I realized I, cannot, I don't want to live anywhere else but here for now. And I don't know how long I'm going to be here, but right now this place is healing me, is teaching me, is giving me lots of wisdom and peace and sense of community. It's opening my eyes to a lot of beauty and the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so when you say you're here for the medicine, what medicine specifically are you here uh, for? Plant medicine. Well, I've tried almost everything. <laughs> Ayahuasca was the beginning, and then uh, Bortuma and psilocybin mushroom, Bufo, and yeah. Can you talk a little bit about your Ayahuasca experience? Ayahuasca experience. The mother Ayahuasca. I have so much respect and gratitude for that plant. It's really mother of all plants and wisdom. It's not an easy, it wasn't, it hasn't been an easy path, an easy um, understanding this medicine. But what I can say that my journey, uh, what ayahuasca started with really going into the underworld and retrieving pieces of my souls that have been left behind this life, past life, um, I should say past lives, also, there was a lot of understanding. It was just like a mirror that I was looking through, and I didn't like the person that I was seeing in, the, in, that, in that side of the mirror. I went through a phase of blaming everyone and blaming myself, but then I kept coming back to love and forgiveness and having compassion for myself because I didn't know. And I was, and I, it kept taking me deeper and deeper and deeper into the programming, the education system that I grew up with mostly. And then obviously the situation in my country, and then it comes into the family and culture and constantly worrying about how people perceive you and how people think about you. And then I was like, okay, I can, I have two choices. I can choose to be in that space of victimhood and keep complaining and blaming everyone and keep crying or I can stand up and build rebuild on top of that rebuild on top on top of all the programming and choose to say no and keep taking my power back keep taking my power back and keep coming back to my heart and it's been a journey really from my head to my heart and it's been the longest journey and the journey continues if you were to pinpoint one lesson that ayahuasca has given you, what would that be? I think the most profound lesson was forgiveness for me. Mm. It's really forgiveness and gratitude. Because I realized it so is easy to take people and situations for granted when we live in a society that hasn't taught us to really be grateful for every single thing that we have and not really put a focus on the things that we don't have. But that wasn't the case for me. So with ayahuasca, I learned to first forgive. Forgive, and it all comes down to myself, forgiving myself, forgiving myself for putting myself in a certain situations, to surround myself with certain people. Because at the end of the day, even if my mind doesn't understand, in my heart there's a knowing that I chose 
to be interacted with these people, to be in these situations so I can learn. So again, I don't understand with my mind, but there's a knowing in my heart. And that knowing tells me to, you learned your lessons from that came from this situation or this person. So forgive, forgive yourself for not knowing, for doing the things that I didn't know. And I feel like in the past one and a half years for me is really been a journey of forgiveness, amplifying self-love, have compassion for myself, because it all starts with us, within us. And once we start having all of that for ourselves, and this is what I'm learning once I have all of this for myself, then I can have it for you and every other people, person that come to my life. Uh, and gratitude. Gratitude for having a roof over my head, for having food in front of me, because the life that I had, that I was living, things were just so easy coming in and out that it wouldn't even, I wouldn't even take a moment to really appreciate all of that myself or providing myself for myself all the things that I had it almost felt like I was entitled or things are coming so easy but really traveling and seeing uh, how other people live and how other cultures it really opened my eyes to really be grateful every single day every single day for my health for my breath for the things that I have these are really the, the, really the most profound lessons. There's so many. Mm -hmm. There's so many, yeah. Mm -hmm. And if someone back home that has never tried any kind of medicine, plant medicine, if they ask you about, uh, for them, right, if they want to try it, what would be one advice that you would give them? I would ask them, I would tell them how they feel in their body and how grounded they are because... I wasn't grounded when I started drinking ayahuasca. So I really got lost and it took me a while to really find my way back. I mean, ayahuasca is, is a beautiful plant. It can show you a lot about you and who, because we all want to think that we're good people and we do the best that we can and we're kind, but we only see that surface layer. We don't see the depth of that energy that comes from. So with ayahuasca, it, shows the intention behind every word that we speak, behind, behind every actions. And when you see that, you can either choose to run away, and if you're not in your body, if you're not grounded, and that really can make your whole life even more complicated and twisted. So the first advice would be meditate. Do you meditate? Do you have any spiritual practice in your daily life? Do you pray? And I wish I knew all of that before I start drinking medicine. Then I would have started with meditation and praying, prayers and really feeling my heart. <sighs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Would you say that ayahuasca has helped you? Oh, even though it complicated your life. <laughs> Yes, it helped me because I choose not to give up. Mm -hmm. Ayahuasca for me was a magnet. Not just, actually not ayahuasca. What came from ayahuasca was a field of, full of fear. But then there was something was in me that was like, I got to go in. I got to go deeper. It's like, I already, I'm already inside the rabbit hole. I cannot turn back because then I'm going to be even more lost. Mm -hmm. So for me, there was no, there was no going back. Mm -hmm. It was just moving forward. And yes, it was really hard, but then something inside of me was telling me, Neta, keep going. There is a softer ground on the other side that you can land on. And that, that knowing was really my inspiration to keep moving, to mm -hmm. keep moving forward. And I am forever grateful for that medicine. <laughs> like knowing what I've been through, asking me, hey, you know what's going to happen. Are you still going to drink? Same route. Be like, yes, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. yes. Would you say that ayahuasca is for everybody? I don't know. I don't think so. 
Like, I can only say this because I have this conversation with my mom. And my mom loves how she's growing. She's growing by reading. She loves reading. And every time we talk about this, she's like, I don't see myself drinking ayahuasca. It's not for me. It's too much. It's too fast. And I like the pace I'm going. So, and I respect that. It's good. And that comes from knowing thyself like if I know how I am and how I learn and what pace I'm living my life then I can make a better decision for me everything was fast I was living a really fast lifestyle and I was always looking for a shortcut and ayahuasca was my shortcut <laughs> but also it was like <laughs> <laughs> too much at once too much at once yeah. yes especially with how I started. I didn't give myself enough time to integrate. Mm -hmm. I was kept drinking and drinking and drinking for like six, seven weeks mm -hmm. with like three, four ayahuasca a week. Mm -hmm. That was how I started. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think when we start drinking medicine, our first thought is like, everybody should do this. <laughs> this is so great. Everybody should do it. And then, like, years down the road, you're like, this is not for everybody. This is definitely not for everybody. <laughs> There's no going back. That's it. You know, yeah. you can't see what you've seen. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're going to kind of shift this into uh, a way for medicine. I do want to talk more about medicine with people in the Valley because I don't think there's enough talk about ayahuasca. Because you, you have your people like Aubrey Marquez, right, talking about his insane ayahuasca experience and then people listen to that and then they have this uh perceived perspective of like oh if i go to peru and if i drink ayahuasca this is what my experience will be like and it's mm -hmm. nothing close to that mm -hmm. you know and so i want to also ask just random people about their experience with ayahuasca because every experience is so different because right. we're all unique right you know, unique people and we walk on a unique path and every single one of us are just unique. And, and we we're have all a coming unique, from different coming places. different from places. Yeah. yeah. So what would you say throughout your entire journey that what are you most proud of? I'm really proud of the strength that I got to tap into. So many times I wanted to give up from here. But then when I was coming back, I was like, no, I can't. I'm proud of not giving up on myself. I love myself too much to want to give up and going back to the life that I had. That was great. And I'm grateful that I had that life and that experience to be sitting here and be like, that's a great life, but I don't want to go back there. Honestly, I'm just really proud of how strong I am. And I had no idea. Mm. I had no idea that when life puts me in, the, in those situations, no one can fuck with me. Mm -hmm. And I can really bring that fire up within myself and to keep going and to keep loving myself as I'm going. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like I can't think of anything else. I mean, there's so many things I am proud of myself, but one of the most thing is like, wow, wow, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank my body every single day. I put myself through so much in the past two and a half years. Mm -hmm. I put myself through so much. Mm -hmm. But then I've been with myself every step out of the way, out of going through the underworld and coming back on the other side of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. The strength and the resilience. Yeah, you don't know how resilient you can be until you go through some shit, Yeah, right? Do you consider yourself to be awakened? And what does that mean for you? That's a question I ask myself too. And what I can tell you is awaken. I am awakened. But then it's like you're waking up and you're living your life from that perspective of being awake. But the awakening is also, for me has layers. Awakening is awakening to different aspects of myself, to different parts of myself. So yes, there are parts that, that I just woke up to that, oh wow, this is how I feel. This is how 
things are working in life but there are parts that I still don't know. So the awakening, I feel like it's just, it happens like this. You wake up one, one day and you wanna know more. You wanna learn more or unlearn or all of it. It's like becoming and unbecoming. It's like, I live my life based on what the system taught me, my parents taught me. Okay, brought me so far, this far. And now I wanna learn some, how, some other way. And that's the moment of awakening. But then it's a path that you're walking on. Path of awakening is like you keep peeling the layers and you keep on learning the things that don't resonate anymore and learning the things that are coming more from love and compassion and just like it feels home in your body. That has been for me. That's the path of awakening. But then it just happened for me. It just happened and I said no to everything that I knew. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can pinpoint that moment of, of that first step that 100%. you took. Yeah. Can you talk about that a little bit? Where you were, you know, what happened? Maybe there was a situation that occurred. Well, for me, I can tell you what led to that moment. What led to that moment was questions. I always had a lot of questions that why I am the way I am. It wasn't about comparing myself to other people, but I could see certain things in certain people. And I'm like, well, it's not that I not capable of showing that part of myself, but why can't I do that? These questions, it's not that I was like stuck in those questions, but I could see them. I was just observing these questions and I was trying to understand. And meditation, also Vipassana was another uh, door for me to really tap into that part. But relationships, relationships was a big awakening for me. Again, I always knew in my body that I didn't come to this world to grow up, go to school and then get a job and make money and get married and have kids and live that life. And there's nothing wrong with that life. I just felt that that can be it. That can be part of something bigger, but it can be the whole, it can be my whole life. Mm -hmm. And relationships after relationships, and I was searching and searching for something more meaningful. And I couldn't find it. It wasn't there. And that was making me frustrated and angry at, the, at my own partners that I was, spending time and living with them and almost I almost got married and I was like I can't go through this 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 life is not for me I mean it it is but it's not just it so and I was like okay there's something wrong with me that I cannot find that deep de depth in my relationships and that's how I was like okay I'm going to take the whole responsibility on myself and I'm going to go heal myself because why can't I see, why can I feel fulfilled in the space of, a, of other people being in a relationship with my partner and just enjoying watching a movie or, or everything that I, that I can enjoy now because I understand a lot more now. Mm -hmm. But at that moment, it just wasn't fulfilling for me. Do you know now what it was that you were searching for then? Connection. Okay, what, what kind of connection? And it wasn't connection with anybody. It was mostly connection with myself. Mm -hmm. I was really longing to know who I am. Mm -hmm. It's like, I felt like I know what I want because I was programmed to know what I want. But that wasn't really what you wanted. That wasn't really what I wanted, mm -hmm. exactly. So now that I know some of the some of the things that i've experienced i know that i do want relationship i do want to be in a fulfilling relationship but where we can both hold space for each other and back then i didn't know what holding space even means like i didn't even know how to hold space for myself let alone for somebody else mm -hmm. so these past two and a half years taught me if I can hold for my for whole space for myself and really be with my own feelings, then I can be with my partner's feeling, with my friend's feeling, with my family, with my sister. Can you explain what God is in your words? Yes. <laughs> Actually, there's a story. So about two and a half years ago, I got my 200 hours 
yoga certificate here in Peru that at the, towards the end of the retreat, they asked us, people that believe in God stay on this side, people that don't believe in God on that side, people that are kind of do and don't in the middle. So I stayed in the middle because throughout my life, I was never thought about God. I mean, the God that comes from the education system and Islam, yes, I did know that. And I had a lot of fear from that God, the God that takes you to hell if you lie or if you show your hair or whatever, bad and good and all the duality. But in my heart, I believed in a higher power. Like There is no way all these beauty just happen to be here. There is a higher energy for me. Now, after really being in the spiritual path, I actually had a conversation with my mom this morning and about God. We always have this conversation. And I told her, I felt the energy of God within me, in my every bones. I actually saw God. I remember when I was going through a rite of passage a year and a half ago in the jungle uh, to where they come out of the the underworld, the first thing that came to me, first I saw this stone door that I was looking up and it got open and there's this bright light hit my face and I started crying because the only word that came out of my, mo my mouth was God. And then right after I received uh, a message to shave my head and to followed by three days of fasting and praying. So back to your question, God for me is you, is love, is this tree outside of your door, is the mountains, is kindness, is compassion. All these are particles of God that we all have them, we all carry them within ourselves. And sometimes I ask myself, wow, am I not purified yet? Am I not cleansed yet? And that was in the beginning of my journey. But then when I reflect on that question that I asked for myself, I hear that says, you've always been a child of God and you've always been purified and that pure innocent. There was just masks on top of that. And it was hard for you to see and feel that. So this journey of really peeling the layers of unbecoming to really embody that divine child of God that I am. Remembering that you Remembering are perfect. that I am perfect, yeah. yes. Nothing makes you unperfect. That's what Jesus had. Jesus knew he was perfect. And this is what he was trying to teach all of us is like, you are perfect. You're just putting on all of these judgments on your own self and you're carrying all of that heaviness, right? And that's why people looked at him as perfect and they thought that they were unworthy. Okay. If you had to talk for 15 minutes straight on a stage about anything at all, what would you choose to share with your audience? I'm very passionate about this topic, about topic of self-discovery. So I think I can talk about the lessons that I've learned about, I'm so passionate about it. It's just like, really, it's, it's been hard, but it's been amazing. It's been amazing. <laughs> all the lessons that comes with this journey. I mean, I think I have stories to also talk about the stories about my own journey and how I grew up and how I became who I am today and how, and freedom. Honestly, freedom is another topic that I'm very passionate about because my journey from at a young age started leaving my country, moving to Canada and being here in Peru is all I'm, I'm following freedom because I want to be free and I'm going to get to that freedom in this life. I know mm -hmm. it. And the freedom I'm talking about is up here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. What is your greatest fear and how does it influence the choices you are making in your life? I don't know about my greatest, but one of the fear that's been coming up and I'm seeing it is fear of not being liked, mm -hmm. fear of not being accepted. That's so real. Wow, that's very vulnerable too. Because this fear, it's been with me since uh, childhood and I'm seeing how I, some of the choices I made in my life was coming from that space 
of I'm going to do this or I'm going to dress like this or I'm going to be this person or talk this way. So my audience would see me and like me and uh, accept me. And I see that how this wasn't in my, uh, this wasn't coming from my consciousness. And it's like, I feel like recently it's coming out more and more and more for me to really see that. It's taking me really deep in this, but it's definitely coming from my childhood. I always growing up saying, I'm not for everybody. I'm okay if people don't like me, but I wasn't, you know, that was also another mask. I wasn't okay with that, with being rejected. And I think that's also part of being human because we as human, we have emotions and, and that's also okay to feel that. I also, I'm also coming to an acceptance. It's okay if I get upset when I feel rejected, when I feel not liked because I am not for everyone at the end of the day, but who am I to myself? And now I'm really keep going deep, deeper and deeper with having that connection that I always wanted with myself so I can love myself and see myself for who I am with all the perfection and imperfection and all the black and white that I have. Yeah, okay. yeah. Thank you for being so vulnerable. Thank you. What qualities do you value most in your closest relationships? The first thing that comes to my mind is honesty. It doesn't matter how hurtful it can be, but I really value honesty because I also value that in myself. Like, it hurts sometimes to really be honest with myself. Like, I know and I felt I want to hide from myself. Like, and I do that. I go under a blanket, but there's no one there. I do that just to hide from myself. But I gotta be honest with myself. This is how I feel and this is how it is. So yeah, honesty, because that tells me that how, it, it's, there's layers. When you're honest, then you can trust. You can be trustworthy. It's like a foundation for mm -hmm. me. It's like a foundation that you can build on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is something you thought was really important when you were younger? But as you got older, you realized that it just wasn't that important. Ooh. Money. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. Money is good. And can definitely bring a lot of comfort, but not happiness. I mean, it depends how you look at it, but definitely not that inner peace and happiness no actually the more money that means more stress mm. <laughs> so you're realizing it's actually not that important that you thought it was like the most important thing in the world yeah and if you were to go back in time and give your younger self advice what would that advice be oh I haven't answered that question for myself yet but give me a minute yeah take your time I can edit this out <laughs> I can edit that out <laughs> and I can make it sound like you're answering the question as soon as I ask <laughs> no this is a good question actually it's putting me right on spot because I feel like I've been also running away from that question as well it comes and I'm like uh, no no I'm not ready <sighs> my younger self I think the first thing I would say to her that you are safe you're very, very safe. And you have the whole universe that are watching over you and you are protected. Just take the next step, knowing that you will succeed. And even if you don't, it's okay. You'll get up because you have the whole universe mm -hmm. watching over you. Mm -hmm. And when you're saying that, do you have a version of yourself at what age that you are giving this advice to? I think eight years old. Something happened in my childhood that really changed me. As I heard from my family that I was growing up, I was an angel, like angel walking, talking, behaving until something really shifted in me. And I can't think of anything but the education system in Iran that really made a rebel out of me. And I became this unsettled child. Everywhere I was looking, I was hearing, no, no, it's not okay, this is not okay. You can't be this way, you can't wear this, you can't do this, you can't say this. That made me worse. Wanting to do everything that I'm hearing, no. And then the rebel was the surface. 
But inside that rebel was just this fearful little child that just needed to be hugged all the time to be sure that she's safe. I mean, my, my parents were hugging me all the time, but not that kind of hugging, you know, the inner hugging of feeling of safety, mm -hmm. which I feel like it was also hard for my parents to give that to me living in that country when they weren't even sure if I'm leaving the house, if I'm going to come back home. Yeah, that's very powerful. And you do know that that eight-year-old Netta feels that. Right, yeah. Okay, and I guess let's finish off with um, what is the most beautiful thing in life? Right here, right now. <laughs> <laughs> the present moment. Yes. <laughs> Honestly, I, I'm coming to realization. If someone lives in a present moment from the childhood, growing up, always stay present in their body, and they don't need anything, no ayahuasca, no medicine, because life becomes right here, right now. Mm. And it's easy to really say it, but I mean, it's a lifetime of really mm. coming back to the present moment. Right. Sometimes people ask me, Netta, where are you going? I'm like, I'm not going anywhere. I'm coming back. I'm coming back <laughs> to the present moment because my mind took me way ahead of me way ahead of me and that's why i'm here to slow down if you want to go forward you got to slow down or if you want to go forward faster you got to slow down something like that which i am experiencing it because yes. i've been working with a teacher and six months ago he said netta no medicine i was like what no i uh, no like i was like i was i was having a hard time what do you mean no medicine that's why i'm here <laughs> This is what defines me. Yes. Well, <laughs> kind of. And he's like, no medicine. Go sit outside for two hours. Drink a cup of tea. And I've been doing that. And I realized, now I'm realizing because I'm still integrating the medicine that I drank two and a half years ago. That's why I also realized the power of slowing down, the mm -hmm. power of coming back to my breath, the power of just sitting outside and do nothing. Just watch a tree for an hour and enjoy a cup of coffee or tea, whatever. And realizing Just, that and realizing is medicine. That is medicine, exactly. Yeah. And I realized that. Yeah. Like, I remember one morning I actually drank three cups of coffee, which I don't really drink coffee. But that morning I was like, I don't need to even drink milk. But I said, I want coffee with milk. And I drank three cups of coffee with milk because it was full of medicine. It was full of wisdom in that cup mm. of coffee that bringing so much pleasure mm. into my body full of joy full of joy exactly i'm also realizing that life is a medicine mm -hmm. <laughs> the biggest medicine of all <laughs> if if you every step of living this life yeah. being present with myself with my body mm -hmm. which is work in progress yeah yeah Okay, one more question. How do you know that you are in the present moment? Good question. How do I know I'm in the present moment? Well, I started with, because uh, I didn't understand that before. I was like, I'm washing dishes. Do I keep saying that to myself? Am I enjoying washing dishes? <laughs> <laughs> what does it even mean um, I'm washing dishes? But then I realized, I started like stepping outside of myself and observe myself. Oh, I'm washing dishes, but I'm thinking about what I'm going to do next thing or what I did yesterday or what this person said to me. Okay, so being fully present is like, you don't have to enjoy washing dishes, but you can be in your body, like really be in your body as I'm. Mm -hmm. And again, I haven't fully embodied that, but I'm coming to it every yeah. time I'm getting a little bit closer to really feeling that I'm eating. I don't have to watch TV or scroll on my phone yeah. as I'm eating yeah. because it's all energy that I'm grasping as I'm eating. So be present with just my food, whether it's good or bad or I'm hungry or I'm not hungry. It doesn't matter. It's just really allow my body to receive this food, mm -hmm. not just eating, eating because right. I'm feeding myself. Mm -hmm. Having the awareness of Having. like feeling the fork, right? And then like really tasting everything that you're tasting. And that yeah. I think is like slowly and slowly you start to build that awareness 
that you are actually present yeah. in that moment. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm learning. I'm still learning. <laughs> yeah. Everything I do, even taking a bath, like almost like activating my extrasensory like a feeling, everything that is coming in contact with my body, whether it's water or soap or food. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, feeling the water mm -hmm. on the skin. Yeah. Yeah, well, wow. Thank you, Netta. Thank, <laughs> thank you so you. much. Um, I really enjoyed interviewing you. I think this was uh, really sweet. And I've learned by interviewing you too, you know, and um, having the opportunity to hear everything that you're going through, as well as like just seeing your vulnerability. That was very special. Thank you so much. Thanks yeah, for the thanks. opportunity. <laughs> oh, I love you, sister. I love you too. Mm. <laughs> Tea? Sure, sounds good. <laughs>